Okay, I'm somewhere exciting today. Somewhere that I'm really excited to be. I'm in San Diego, California. And I am aboard the USS Midway. So you can see right there, there's San Diego. And look at this. And I'm gonna tell you all about this ship and anyway, whatever I know about it. But I like visiting places like this. And the whole tour starts with them talking about Midway. And you see this plane right here? This is a dive bomber. And that thing is big. Or well, somebody is calling me. So that is a dive bomber. These planes are extremely slow. And you can see it's got a machine gun to help protect it, which it does not. And you can see right here, it's called the Dauntless. And probably the most famous person that ever flew one of these was George Bush, who was the president of the United States. The first George Bush, not the second one. He fought in World War II and his plane crashed and he was picked up and you can see the bomb it would carry. Now, in the, in the Battle of Midway, uh, this is very important to, to know, this ship is called the Midway and why is it called the Midway? We're gonna get into all that. And this is obviously a Japanese pilot. And look at that steam. Holy moly. But here is, they talk all about the Battle of Midway. And if, you, if you're gonna spend hours and hours and hours here, and I mean hours, you could learn all about the Battle of Midway. But I'll explain it to you in just a few minutes. Because I know all about the Battle of Midway. And look at this, they got like a little scene on here of the Yorktown, I guess, getting a hole punched open in it. Because I think the Yorktown was the only American carrier that was lost at Midway. This ship that I am on is the longest running aircraft carrier in the history of the United States. And we're going to talk about why we look at all this stuff. That is another Dauntless right there. You can see it's carrying a torpedo. Now, in World War II, the United States had the worst torpedoes. Most of them didn't even work. Believe it or not, the best torpedo in the world was the Japanese. And, of course, the Germans, who were famous for World War II uh, submarines. Now, this is a Wildcat. A very durable airplane. You can see right there, it says F4F Wildcat Fighter. This plane is very durable, and it was one of the main planes used by the United States in World War II, as far as the Navy is concerned. Now, I'm gonna to explain to you, this ship was laid down in 1943. So the United States was building ships as fast as they could and they quickly realized that the aircraft carrier was going to be the number one ship going forward pearl harbor a bunch of battleships were destroyed some of them were even fixed and reused in the war later and the most famous of all the battleships is the arizona and that's still sitting in hawaii and the United States, wow, look at this. So you can see construction in 1944, and it was commissioned in 1943, or 1945, eight days after the war ended against the Japanese. So you can see it served for 47 years, three tours in Vietnam, and it also it served in Iraq. It was the main battleship or the you know the main uh, the flagship of the Iraq war and you can also see this is how they built aircraft carriers in 1944 
they, they, the, the planes fly off this deck and then they land on the back. And then what they wanted to do down the road was they wanted to launch uh, ships simultaneously and land them simultaneously, which you could not do on that one. So see the ship, the, the planes launch there and they can land at the exact same time. Because when they land, if they were to crash, they're coming at this angle so they wouldn't crash into a deck full of planes trying to leave. But this ship was modernized three different times. So you can see right here in 1971, it was reconfigured again and all this space was added. So look at this ship here and look at this ship here and you can see it changed drastically. So anyway, this would be like a scout plane where it would fly um, and try to find and spot enemy targets. It's crazy. Um, so anyway, I'm not going to explore the whole ship, um, but I am going to look at all of these, uh, these planes and we're going to walk around just until the battery dies. This right here is a Corsair. This plane was probably the most lethal of all of World War II with its swept wing design. The wings actually can fold up so you can get more of these planes on an aircraft carrier than you could of any other. And uh, this was also made famous for a TV show called Baba Black Sheep. And look at, this is showing you how the motor works. This is very interesting. Very interesting. Wow. And that's a lot of steel right there. And then look, you can even come over here and sit in a seat and buckle up. And then this would have been a helicopter that would have been on the ship. This to me, and I don't know what this is, but this looks like a training plane. Oh yes, it is. A pilot trainer. So you would literally learn how to fly for the Navy and that ship. Now look at this over here. They've got a VR system where you can sit in there and look at VR and see what it looks like to take off of a ship. Now remember when I explained the Corsairs? The wings could fold up? Here's another plane right here and you can see how this is very important for aircraft carrier based planes. You can see how that wing folds backwards. So you can put more on the ship. Look at this, this is crazy. They have all these motion ride simulators. Now, and look at this, they have a cafe. Unreal, and what the heck is this? Oh, so this is looking down into a hangar bay where they would repair jet engines down there and then this elevator would lift them up to the flight deck. Very interesting. And then they have a big restaurant here. And check this out. Carriers past and present. So here's a, like a, a picture or a model of their very first aircraft carrier and then you can see how it evolved quite a bit. Very interesting. Now, let me uh, explain to you. Oh, here's a big old model. Let's check this out. Wow, look at that. Now see, back in World War II, when they would make these, they would have all this armory on the side of the ship. Almost like a, the armory of like a cruiser, not a battleship, but a cruiser. And yeah, any, any aircraft guns everywhere, because these ships had to protect themselves. But today, they don't really protect themselves. They have a whole fleet of ships that travel with them. And um, they have an array of weapons to do nothing but protect the aircraft carrier. And the aircraft carrier, of course, has some weapons on it, but nothing. And look at this. Here's the mess hall. Let's see what's for dinner today. <laughs> so we're in the galley. 
And you got people serving up the food. Very interesting. And these hatches would be sealed um, in case of flooding. So every section of this ship is compartmentalized so that you can prevent flooding to get into other areas of the ship. Very cool. That's a big red one, so that one's got to be something. Look at all this wire. It's miles and miles and miles of it. And you'll see that it's all exposed. Just like if you were at a stadium. All the wiring is exposed so you can get to it. And you can see everywhere you look, you have these doors. And then you just keep going down. And this clearly does not allow you to explore the entire ship. Look at there's the phone. <laughs> and there's another hatch that would go down and see another hatch. I mean this thing is a labyrinth. Valves over whoops, excuse me. I mean to, to understand how to operate this ship. I mean I don't even know. Look at this. This is crazy. Excuse me. Whoops. Here is the church, the chapel for. And look at this. The ceiling is so low. I mean, you literally have to be. You can't be claustrophobic or have any kind of anxiety to work on one of these ships. I mean, I'm just speaking the truth here. Because. It's very claustrophobic. Chaplain department. Wow. Whoops. This is one of the doors that I really want to try. And here you go. This would be one of the officers' quarters. Maybe a pilot quarter. And everywhere you go, you're going to see these. And look at this. It has a little window in case, you know, of a flooding. You can see if somebody's on their side. Maybe you have a chance to reopen the door and let them out. We also have these little things right here. And you can scan them right here. And you could learn about the rooms. Check this out. This is Executive Officer Knock Uncovered Enter. Wow. Huh. He's got himself a nice little setup here. Very interesting. There's his bed. Look, there's a phone right next to his bed, just in case. Oh, look at that old TV. Man. And he's got his own little bathroom. Look at that. Crazy. A phone everywhere to call the bridge. Hmm. Pipes, generators, you know how many engineers would have to work on this ship. This is the fire station here. Oops. Look at all this wiring. And you'll notice all these doors are labeled. See, FR-198. So somebody would know where that is. Oh, here's the dinner menu. Tonight's movie. Creole soup, Salisbury steak, can't wait. And here's the dining room for the officers, I'm a guessing. And here's some silverware that was on the ship. So I'm imagining this was strictly for officers. Senior officers wardroom. Oh. And you know who they have? It says it has a bowling alley as well. 
See, look at this. And that looks like MacArthur right there. Very, very cool. Oops. So, um, it's very cramped in here. And I mean extremely. And here it is. We're coming out the back side of the kitchen. And can you imagine being the guy that would know what all these things do? How to fix it? An air craft carrier could have as many as 2,500 to 3,000 personnel on board to keep the ship up and running. Look at this. There's like a pie thing over there. You can there's a toaster, some pops, some cornflakes. Oh, check this out. Oops, excuse me. Here's the barber shop. Back in 15 minutes. I think he's been gone a little longer than that, but. There it is. Wow. And it, let me tell you something, it's a, San Diego is a relatively cool, okay, uh, environment. So it's like 75, 80 degrees outside. It is actually really hot on this ship. And I would imagine that in operation, it was hot. There's a bunch of sh Look at this, like, we're, I think we're, this is the laundry room. Looks like, yep, we're doing laundry. Look at that, they even have one that's tossing just for uh, the sake of the, this tour. This is very nice. You gotta watch your hair. Whoops. Yeah, there's the laundry room. It's very cool. Now we'll go back up. Now I can tell you, in the event of something bad happening, and you gotta get up on deck, you gotta know where you're going. <laughs> because you can get lost in here very easily. And the other thing is, you notice that these, uh, these doors, you gotta step over them. This is no joke. I see they removed that one, but all of them would have had it, so they've left a handful. And here's another. Here's a navy sh a shower. You can see these little bitty stalls. They they are little. Holy cow! They've done a good job of turning this into a museum. I can tell you that. This is firefighter equipment. And obviously they're not gonna let you go. And here's officer passage only. So that would access a bunch of uh, rooms. Now I promise to tell you, I'm gonna see if I can work my way up to the flight deck. I've been on a couple different battleships, and those are really cool. Probably, in my opinion, a lot cooler than an aircraft carrier. Because they've got gigantic guns. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, they got a lot of really cool stuff. This is just more of the same. Um, the kitchen. Now, real quick... I want to tell you that, what's this? Look at this. Look at that, they're bringing bombs up. Torpedoes. So these ships would have tons of elevators. Oops, excuse me. 
And this tells you about the different ranks in the Navy, the uniform, different kinds of weapons, air groups, rating badges. You're just kind of coming along with me as we go along. And this is uh, talking about the, the history of flight for the Navy. First aircraft carrier. Modern aircraft carriers. And future carriers it talks about. Look, this is like a rescue thing if you're pulling somebody out of the water. Where are they going? So this is the CP mess hall. We've already been down there. We want to get to the flight deck. Look over here. Check this out. Look, they make it look like it's active and going. It's, this talks about how they feed the fleet. That's interesting. They're back in a mess hall. Um, anyway, so a couple things that I want to mention. Look, this is for the mail. They get packages on these ships, believe it or not. And look, this is a... Uh, all the kind of metal machinery you would need to fix and repair anything and everything on the ship. Look at that, all the parts. I mean, can you imagine what this thing would carry besides just planes and bombs and missiles? This is a whole workshop. Tour continues. It's pretty cool, huh? I wish I would have made a video when I went on a couple old battleships. The main battleship that I want to go see is the, U uh, the USS Missouri. The USS Missouri is in Hawaii. And that's where World War II officially ended because the Japanese signed surrender papers on the deck of the Missouri. Why did they sign on the USS Missouri? Because Truman, the president at the time, was from Missouri. And the battleship Missouri fought in multiple wars, including the Korean War, the Vietnam War, and the Iraq War. Is it diesel? Yeah, I think it's Boiler like, technicians uh, is talking about all the different kinds of people that would work on this ship. Here's where they sleep. Check that out. Could you sleep there? And then right underneath, right underneath their bed would be like a small locker. Look at that. This is where you sleep. And here's everything in your whole world that you can keep. And you can see somebody's locker, they got pictures of their wife. Very cool. Look at that. Motor rewinding shop, whatever that means. For electric motors, they rewire the re-spool the wire to make the wire new again for the electrical motors. Uh-oh, look at this. Would you want to live there? It takes a real savage to be in the Navy and float around for six months at a time on an aircraft carrier. That's no joke. And the people who do it deserve all of your Crazy. Look at that. Look at that. A fire on the ship. There was a big fire from an accident on this ship. They're showing you. Wow, that is so freaking cool. Look at that. Here's the projector right there. Look at that. They're putting the fire out with water. 
that's so cool. Wow, it's air conditioned over here. You know, I want to get to the uh, the flight deck, and all I seem to be doing is just keep going down. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but anyway, what? Uh, let me explain why this ship is called the Midway. It was commissioned in 1943. Midway, the Battle of Midway happened in 1942, and it was the turning point for America and World War II because we were losing every battle. There wasn't a single battle we won. Whoops, excuse me, sorry. Look at all this. Wow, that's just so cool. This is a, a turbine engine, wow. Look at that, you can see down below. Wow, it's gonna be really hot in here. And they got water. And so this ship ran, was just like a current one, steam. Even an atomic powered aircraft carrier creates steam. Which powers pretty much everything. Look at this. Very cool. So the Battle of Midway was a turning point because the Japanese wanted to finish off the American fleet as quickly as possible. Because at Pearl Harbor, they were hoping that the American aircraft carriers would be there, and they weren't. And Japan made a big mistake at Pearl Harbor by not invading the Hawaii and taking it. But in Midway, they were going to correct that mistake. So Yamamoto, the overall admiral, ooh, ooh, sorry, of the Japanese Navy, was in the battleship Yamato, I believe, and he was behind the aircraft carriers because battleships were slower and he was with a lot of troop ships they planned on taking Midway because they could put planes there and attack US Navy ships with planes you know they can go out so many hundred miles and scout around for u.s navy ships and launch attacks on them but the whole idea of the battle of midway for the japanese was to sink all of the american aircraft carriers in one swoop that was the idea and American code breakers figured out by hacking Japanese codes that Midway was their target. And so by doing that, they set a trap. They sank all four Japanese aircraft carriers and the United States lost one aircraft carrier. That was something that Japan could not recover from because they didn't have the industrial might of the United States. So the United States was building ships so fast, it was unprecedented. This ship was laid down in 1943, not knowing when World War II would ever end, and it was commissioned eight days after the war was over. So there you have it. And 
So this ship never fought in World War II. This ship did fight in Vietnam. Look at those planes. That's a F9F Panther. Look at it. Again, look at it. Cannons right in the nose. On modern day fighters. They really don't have aerial combat like they did in World War II. Their sinking ships are uh, other planes from miles away. Not to say they can't, but that's not how they fight really at this point. So this ship is like 1,000 feet long. Check this out. Very cool. And you can walk on this thing. Very cool. Very neat. There's a lot of interaction on the ship. You can go a lot of places. A lot of uh, information about the history of this ship that literally lasted 50 years of service. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. This ship in Vietnam launched the very first, or had the very first kill, meaning air-to-air -air combat kill in Vietnam. This ship was also involved in a race issue with uh, South Africa. Because, you know, they had apartheid there. And the United States had a big naval base. Uh, or they had naval uh, ships that would dock there. Because, of course, they were um, allies of England. And they didn't want the black sailors coming, you know, onto into South uh, South Africa. Look at this. And see that crane right there? That's a lower down on the water for a rescue, or to lower people down. So anyway, this uh, United States government had to get involved and basically told that we won't dock here anymore if you don't allow all of our sailors. Look at this. Wow. Look at that turbine engine. Freaking crazy. And there is world famous FA-18 Hornet. They still fly him today. I don't know if you can go up there or not, but you see somebody up there in that window, like a, a dummy. Look at that, beware of jet blast, props and rotors. This ship fought in Iraq, and then when Iraq war was over, they decommissioned it and became a museum ship. This is crazy. So what I'm standing on right now, right here, this was added onto the ship at a later date. Now, oh, check this out. There is something really cool happening right now. In case you're not aware, San Diego is the biggest uh, port for the United States Navy. Now look at that. That's the, that is the Eagle, or the Tomcat, I mean, that was used in Top Gun, right there. The F-14 Tomcat used in Top Gun. See, Goose would be in that back seat. <laughs> there. But this aircraft carrier, everything you see over there and over there was added later. 
And check this out. We're going to see something really cool here. If I can make it down here. Oh my goodness. It's very cool. That is a bomber. F.A. Crusader. So anyway, you're going to see something really cool here in about 10 seconds. Sorry for the wind. Yeah, in about 10 seconds you're going to see something really, really cool. Look at this. So cool, so neat. Look at this. This is just absolutely crazy. Oh, there goes a sailboat. So right on the other side. Whoops, excuse me. Look at that. Look at all them girls down there. Partying it up. I'm gonna just raise my camera up so you can see it. Do you see that? That's the United States. Uh, I'm guessing it's like a, a destroyer or a cruiser. It's pretty neat. And then you know what's on the other side of it? Another aircraft carrier. It's crazy. Right over there is a big giant port. And look at that right there. There's not one aircraft carrier. There's two. And look at that. Did you see what's on the end? Let's see if I can zoom in. That is a Raptor sitting on the front of that aircraft carrier. Right there. You can see it. That is a Raptor. But then there is another aircraft carrier. There's two aircraft carriers in port right here in San Diego. And you can see that it works because look at the conning tower. You can see the satellite thing spinning around in circles. There's stuff spinning all over the top of that thing. Wow. You can see this piece right here that was added on. And this created a serious problem for this ship. This actually became what was known as the rolling ship. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what I think. There was a famous crash on the deck of this plane that was filmed, and the footage of that crash was used in multiple movies, including Hunt for Red October, which is kind of interesting. You know, the another thing that's really interesting about this, I think it's like five acres or four or five acres of flight deck they had a basketball game, a, you know, a college basketball game was played on this deck. It was Syracuse first, none other than San Diego State. And you know who won? The Orangemen. One of the greatest basketball programs in the history of college basketball. This also, this is an interesting fact about this ship it's the first ship in history that could not get through the Panama Canal so this ship will not fit through the Panama Canal so it can't cut through South America so if it was wanting to go around it would have to go all the way around uh, Chile all the way to the bottom all the way near the Antarctica to make its way around wanted to do that you can't cut through and check this out isn't this cool look at this if you ever wanted to see one of these up close you're seeing it right now 
Look at those thrusters. And do you know what this is? Right there. That drops and it hooks. Uh, that's a, a carrier hook. And so it would catch it and these cables would stop it. And they were almost like roller coaster technology, to be honest with you. It would catch it and slow it down very slowly. This doesn't drastically stop it. A lot of roller coaster technologies today is derived from aircraft carrier propulsion systems of launching planes because the hook also hooks on and then underneath it pulls them as well as their thrusters it pulls them uh, off the ship and gives them extra I don't know what the heck's going on over here maybe this is like a tour look at that and it's right here the Midway Museum and I hope I shared some uh, interesting facts about World War II. That, that's what, the ship was commissioned for World War II. And do you see what this is right here? Look how big that is. That actually lifts up. So a plane will come out of that hangar, roll under here, the, and this lifts it up, and then the plane comes out and takes off. Crazy, right? Totally crazy. Unbelievable. I know for some these videos might be a little boring because I never turn them off and I don't I don't edit them of course we edit videos but um, I like to just like walk around take you with me show it to you and we're just like making videos when we go cool and interesting places and to me this is cool and it's interesting tour continues Oh, look, maybe we'll go one more little area. Now, I want to tell you another thing. Out here in San Diego, where this aircraft carrier is, you can see it just keeps going down. Um, they have some old schooners, you know, from like the 1600s, and they have all kinds of ships down here that you can tour, not just this big aircraft carrier all kinds of stuff Ooh, it's nice and air conditioned in here check this out chief of staff stateroom and here is a carrier battle group like we talked about and you can see this and this one they have a battleship leading it in order for that to, and here is the Battle of Midway, where those Dauntless are bombing these Japanese carriers. Map room, all cool. Ooh, check this out. We hit the mother load right here. Look at that. How many times have you seen a movie and people are sitting in this room where it's nice and dark? And look at that, it says, like Kuwait. It shows you, see, like Missouri and Wisconsin, those would be the battleships. They were pounding the defenses of Iraq from the Gulf. There's a comm phone. And it's got a button on the inside, I guess, to talk. Very interesting. Look at this. Look, here we go. Yes. Look at it, and it's rotary. That's how old it is. <laughs> Very fun. Very interesting. So Whoops, excuse boards. me. Sorry. Pardon me? Different stuff, planes, ships. Let's go through here. Look at this miles and miles and miles of wires. Oh, yeah. Ex yeah. Explanation. Yeah. 
radio teletypes. Look at all this stuff. Old school radio central. And they got like little mini air conditioners in a lot of these rooms, by the way. So I can tell you, the new aircraft carriers do not have any of this equipment. <laughs> Look at that, it looks like fax machines. And they're cryptic. See, because Oh yeah, look, it's a typewriter and it says break. <laughs> Very cool. None of this equipment exists on a new aircraft carrier. That I can promise you. And over here, they're fixing them. Well, I think that's going to about do this video. You've probably seen enough of this ship. If you were ever building an escape room like we do, you're getting a really good idea of what this type of thing would look like. I'm talking about if you were doing some sort of theme like this. A lot of good insight here. Look at all of this. Wow. Very cool. And it, like I said, it is a little hot in here. They have air conditioners here and there to cool it off. Man, if something bad happened on the ship, I mean, how in the heck? Here's all the commanding officers of this ship. I'm sure a lot of them became senators and um, congressmen. Look at this. This is first class bathrooms. And check this out. This is the captain. A single functioning team. And it's an animation. inspire them every day. Arise above personal issues like being away from their families for months at a time. If just one midway sailor fails, we all fail. I can guarantee you that can turn a few hairs gray. This is the officer of the deck. The boilers are back online and play off years ago. Thanks, Art. I'll be right up. Being captain of the USS Midway is a brutal job, but it's also the best job of my career because the stakes are as high as the rewards. Imagine commanding an aircraft carrier and being solely responsible for the safety of so many sailors in one of the most dangerous environments you can find anywhere. It's a humbling responsibility, one that I'll value for the rest of my life. Oh, excuse me. Well, I'll have to finish my paper. All right, folks. So thanks for, whoops, watching this video. Uh, I got good news for you. We're going to be filming three more haunted houses coming up here real soon. Um, we're also going to go to an event called the Fan Expo. We're going to film that. And we're going to film three, haunted, three more haunted houses. So for those of you who only like haunted houses, we have many, many coming very soon. So from the USS Midway, thanks for joining us. Make sure you like and subscribe to our page because we're just doing this for fun. Until next time.